The difficult story of our hero begins with the fact that he cuts wood, while thinking that the knife is the first object that was in his hand at birth. He was still a young man when his father gave him this knife for the first time, and now he is already ten years old. His father is a sculptor, and he taught him how to use a knife, and also taught him how to be a man, using your brilliant mind and talent as an artist. Today he finished doing what he did for ten years. This is a sculpture of his son, a real masterpiece. The man opened his eyes and tried to warn the one who was near him, saying that from now on he should be more careful. After all, for this man, the one who stood with him was the only son in this world. He once again asked his son to be careful, stating that there are a lot of bad people in this world, and he does not want his son to get hurt. And he also wanted his son not to trust anyone except the master from the Kong family. And at that moment he began to remember that there was a deadly epidemic that affected everyone who lived in the village, and the master of the Kong family died three days ago, as a result of which he and his father are the last survivors of the village because they live in the mountains, away from her. However, he just didn't want to upset his father with such bad news. He also said that he was very proud that this boy was his son, the smartest, most hardworking in his opinion. And the last thing he said was a request to be happy and kind to others. And generally speaking, to be strong, the boy remembered all this also thinking that his father had a beautiful smile. After such thoughts, he raised the statue and thought that he should be happy, and then his father would be happy too. But suddenly he felt an unbearable emptiness inside himself, which he could not describe in words. The guy wondered if his father would feel lonely if he left him like this. But luckily his father will be joined by his mother's grave and he has artistic talent, but he is not special. His hands were very fast, so it wouldn't take long before a new masterpiece was created. The guy's mother left them when he was five years old, and he doesn't remember much about her, but he knows for sure that she was very beautiful. He was glad that he was finally able to finish both sculptures, but still something was bothering him. And at that moment, some old man appeared who asked if the guy made these sculptures alone, and that's how he met his damned master. His father told him not to trust strangers, so he doesn't know how to talk to the suspicious old man. The old man again asked if he made these graves, and the guy realized that like a child, he should respect his elders, and if the old man didn't act like a moron, the guy would also treat him with respect. In the end, he decided to answer in the affirmative without thinking twice. He looked gloomily, and the guy was surprised that the old man passing by was surprised by his masterpieces. Because of all these factors, the guy proudly claimed that these were his sculptures, and the old man looked gloomily. He was thinking, and the guy at that time thought that the old man wanted to ask him to make a sculpture for his grave. After this short thought, he invited him to go with him. This scared the guy. He couldn't understand why he, and what the old man meant, why he even wanted him to go with him. And the old man explained that if he went with him, he would teach him the best martial arts technique in the world. He simply could not believe these words, so he pretended that he did not understand what the old man was talking about. The old man understood his feelings because everything really looked very strange, so he decided to show him something, after which he began to do something unusual. From his movement the earth began to shake, the trees began to rustle like a hurricane, and literally a moment later something resembling white lightning struck the ground, which was incredibly fast. Also this blow was so powerful that all the nearby trees literally lay on the floor being perfectly cut down. The guy couldn't believe it. Such a strange old man knew such a destructive technique, and also performed it without any difficulties. Having shown such a technique, the old man asked again if the guy wanted to learn this martial art from him. He thought about the fact that this old man has such a powerful technique, and in any case, the guy has no place where he could go. And at that moment, he realized that he wanted to make the most of this life. He wanted to do this stupid act, so he extended his hand and affirmed that he was going. That's how he got this chance, to become stronger, thanks to an unfamiliar old man who passed by. And that's how he began his bloody destiny. And after many years, as usual, he trained underwater. A couple of moments later, right there, he began to use some kind of technique trying to pronounce words. And after trying a little, he still managed to release a certain projectile that could move even under pressure. This projectile was able to fly out of the water at incredible speed and create a huge trail of water behind it. When the guy met the old man, he thought that the old man really wanted to become his teacher, but in reality, he just wanted to trample his pride, his heart, and even his future. Somewhere in the middle of the mountains, he realized this that day when he arrived at his shack, 
which looked quite scary. At first, he even thought it was a joke because such a strong martial practitioner lives in a place like this. But he decided that it wasn't that important, especially since he didn't know how strong the old man was. But the way he knocked down the trees looked very cool. The old man noticed how the guy behaved, so he asked about it, and he in turn said that he understood everything, after which he reflected on the fact that usually eccentric masters live in hidden places to teach their students. But without thinking twice, he decided not to give a damn about it, because the most important thing for him was that he could learn something from him, because he is a kind-hearted child, so he shouldn't be so smart. And the first thing he decided to ask was what he would learn today, but the old man looked with a grin and began to suspect that the guy was simply not ready. The next day, the old man decided to show him something, but insisted that he would only do it once. So he asked him to watch carefully. Rice grains are hard, but at the same time fragile, so they can be destroyed very easily. He began to explain that this needs to be done slowly and without force. But you also need to use the strength of your fingers. And you need to wash it at least three times. Having said this, the old man began to knead the rice incredibly hard and quickly. The compactness of the peas, in turn, also affects the final taste of the rice, so we must not forget to cover it with a lid. The old man also asked to remember that if a guy cooks in the mountains, then he must take a stone from the top and put it on the lid in order to feel the real beauty of rice. This is his secret technique. The next day he also taught him, telling him that each type of food has its own characteristics, so the guy must use different techniques for each food. Also, some techniques like flying cooking can be used for vegetables, meat, tofu, and so on, after which you need to put the ingredients in hot oil. They will cook very quickly. The cooking ends when the aromas and taste of the ingredients do not become one. When cooking soup, the essence of the ingredients should merge with the broth without making the ingredients hard and lifeless, so he should handle them delicately and with impatience. That's why, according to the old man, of all aspects of cooking, the most important is feelings. And if you cook sincerely, then the whole universe will bow to your power. The guy understood all this. But he was interested in the question of who the old man was. And he considered him a cook, and that he was teaching the guy to cook in order to become the best cook in the world. However, the old man sighed and asserted that the guy does not see the whole picture because what he is trying to teach him is something unique. He is trying to teach him a hail of lightning, a flying thunder sword. This technique requires incredibly gentle but skillful hands, as well as an outstanding understanding of the technique, a must to achieve success. Cooking trains his dexterity and harmonizes his technique with the art of cooking, but the guy thought that everything the old man said sounded like a lie. But the name of the technique sounded good. The old man asked him to try, but the guy didn't know whether he should do it. And now thinking about it, he understands that this was his last chance to refuse him and run away. However, everything didn't work out very well for him, which is why the old man hit him on the head and forced him to do everything again. A month later, he served normal food and even the old man admitted that today the table looks acceptable. But at that moment, he got angry and asked the master not to forget about food because he was tired of cooking food himself. He was angry that the old man did not feel guilty for forcing his student to cook when he was just sitting and relaxing, and asserted that if he tried to do at least something, he could feel at least a little younger. And on this day, the master finally showed his real face, which was clearly not so rosy. A good beating made him think about many things, and that day he learned that his master could hit with incredible force if he wanted. Knowing this fact greatly affected his future. The old man laughed and said that he was tired from all the exercises, so from now on the guy himself will chop wood for cooking. The guy really got very angry because of this, not understanding how the old man could do this to his delicate body. However, after looking a little, he realized that he didn't even have an axe. But he thought that if he asked the old man, he would do it to him again. But even despite this, he asked the old man where the axe was, after which he suggested that he did not need an axe to chop wood, the old man realized that the guy could still talk and asserted that he did not need an axe. He again decided to assume that he would use his fists to chop wood, just as the old man beat his young frail body. The old man warned the guy that if he spoke, he would hit him again. After this warning, he asked to watch carefully. He threw the knife and it ended up spinning in the air many times, after which the old man calmly caught it. The old man asked if the guy was surprised, and he was thinking about how not to look at this as an ordinary knife. 
but still he tries to look cool with it in his hands, which is already strange. After that, he asks to carefully watch the movement of his hand, because this was a very important part. With one slight movement of his hand, he was able to cut the log that stood in front of him. It seemed simply something unreal. Thanks to such an unusual technique, he was able to cut it exactly in half, which is why the guy was very surprised. The old man claimed that it was not as difficult as it seemed at first glance, but the guy believed that he could not repeat this technique. He couldn't understand what the problem was, so he simply said that the guy could do it without the help of inner strength. And the key was speed. The trick was to bend your wrist at the right moment. The guy decided that at least he should at least try, so he decided to try to do it. This trick was that you need to bend your hand at the right moment, and the main thing is to do it at high speed. But in the end, when he hit, nothing happened, and with such a blow he only made a small hole in the log. The old man was surprised that the guy couldn't even do this, which is why he decided that he couldn't be helped. So this time he asked me to try using my elbow along with my hand when hitting, making the movement look like a semicircle. The old man was surprised when the guy couldn't do it even after using his elbow. But after that, he asked to use his shoulder as well as his elbow and hand. This time the log just flew up and fell to the floor at a fairly fast speed. The old man realized that the speed was still not enough, so he insisted that he should not use so much force to split the log. So next time he asked to use only his brush. The guy understood that he failed not because he was incompetent, and did not understand how an old man could force his student to do something impossible. But he can't say this because the old man will again teach the guy intelligence thanks to his fists. At that moment he realized that something needed to be done, which is why he began to claim that he was only ten years old. And despite the fact that he was a genius, his body was still young and weak. He said all this in the hope that if he were polite, then the old man won't beat him. After those words, the guy said that he couldn't chop wood with this small knife, so he needed something big and strong and asked the old man to provide him with something like that. The old man thought a little and decided that if this is all he needed, then he would have a solution. After these words, he asked to wait until he took something. The guy watched from afar as the old man was looking for something in his barn and heard cries of joy that he had found what he needed. The old man returned with a huge, strong axe while using a strange emotion, looking quite scary with it. He picked up the axe and stated that for some time the guy would use it to chop wood. When the guy saw the axe, he decided that with it it would be a hundred times easier for him to chop wood, and he didn't understand why they gave him a knife if the old man had an axe, because with a knife it's much more difficult. The old man didn't understand why they were looking at him like that, but despite this, he decided to give the guy the axe. However, when the axe was in his hands, the boy was carried straight to the floor because he could not hold it. Because of this, he felt severe pain in his shoulder. The old man only threw an angry look. The guy couldn't understand why the axe was so heavy that he almost dislocated his shoulder with it, but the old man believed that it was impossible to whine about such a trifle because the axe weighed only 42 kilograms. The guy couldn't understand why the old man thought he had the strength to lift such a weight, because it just didn't make sense and he stated that a child could not be expected to lift something so heavy with such a young and tender body. But this angered the old man, so he ordered him to stop being lazy and at least lower the bar of his laziness a little, after which he asserted that he could lift anything if he stopped being lazy and put in at least a little effort and perseverance. And he also believed that even someone like this guy could lift this axe if he applied just a little persistence and stopped giving up so quickly. After a while, the old man noticed that the boy's clothes were dirty, so he decided that it was time to teach him how to wash them. And the old man would finally be able to get rid of this routine work. He ordered the guy to follow him, despite the fact that the guy himself didn't like it very much, because the work only increased. After a short journey, they came to a waterfall in which there was pure crystal water that they could even drink. The old man confirmed that the guy could wash his things here, after which he asked whether the guy felt the surroundings and asked him to clean not only his things, but also his thoughts and body. The guy thought about it and decided that he would agree to come here, even though this place is 30 minutes from home, and with the fact that it's as warm here as in summer, even though it's winter now. But he couldn't understand just what kind of disgusting pile of clothes was standing next to them. The guy couldn't believe that he would wash it all himself with his gentle hands, it seemed to him that they had not been washed since last winter, so he wanted to find out how long the old man had not washed it. 
The old man had already begun to get angry, expressing a lack of understanding of the anger directed at himself, as well as the accusations that the guy made. So he directly, angrily asked if there were any problems, and under such pressure almost anyone would have caved in. The guy realized that things were bad, so he said that there were no problems, and he was just surprised by the amount of clothes, and decided that if he was his student, he could do it, and do this exclusively for his old master. The old man heard this and ordered the guy to just take something. He claimed that a guy could use this washing paddle to make his laundry easier. The old man gave him this stick and asked him to finish all his work quickly so as not to waste time. When the stick was almost in the boy's hands, he began to experience a rather familiar feeling, just like before. A moment later he was on the floor again, along with this stick, just like in the previous situation with a heavy object. Everything happened again, his hand almost didn't pop out again. He again couldn't understand why it was so heavy and why the old man didn't warn him but the old man didn't understand why it was heavy. The old man said that it weighs a little, one and a half times less than that axe. But the guy believed that the stick would not have stuck into the ground if it were light. He realized that that axe was too much for him, and now he needs to do something with it. Besides, this washing shovel will simply tear his clothes. The old man noticed the boy's words and again ordered him not to be lazy, asserting that naturally the clothes would tear if he washed them in the usual way. That's why he must achieve the skill known as you, so that even in strength he can feel the softness. With the help of you, he will be able to wash things correctly. It will also help strengthen his shoulder and wrist. This is a secret technique that was passed down in their clan from generation to generation, and its name is the secret of washing. But the guy didn't understand or remember anything at all. The old man got angry and simply ordered him to study this technique, and the guy just asked him to wait and asked what technique he was talking about. He decided not to be humiliated, so he stated that he needed to remember the technique that he had just explained to him, and the guy just needed to try to remember what the old man said. However, the guy got angry and asked before the old man left to first explain to him how to use this you, but the old man simply ordered to finish the washing before sunset and not to forget to chop wood and cook food. The guy was angry that the old man didn't teach him anything, and now he thinks that he will wash it all away. At that moment, a strong wind rose, and the voice of an old man was heard saying that he would beat the guy if he didn't do this. The guy was very scared of this because he knows what a beating from this old man is, so he was ready to do whatever he was told. The old man lay on the table and looked at the guy, asking him why he didn't handle the stick properly, and asserted that she would be damaged if the guy treated her like that, and continued dragging her along the floor. However, the guy believed that this shoulder blade definitely could not be damaged in any way by simply dragging along the floor. And all that can be damaged are his limbs, with which he carries it all, despite the weight that these things have. After walking a little more, the guy fell and asked why the old man was treating him like that, despite the fact that he was his student. At that moment, the old man came closer to him and ordered him to stop crying, because he was like a child who had spilled milk. He picked up this stick and began to say that it was not heavy and examined whether there were any injuries left on it. After that, he decided to see what the guy was doing all this time while the old man was resting and waiting for him, having high hopes. The old man took out what was inside, and before that he said that it was time for dinner, so the guy should go and chop wood. However, what he saw before simply amazed him, because of which his gaze radically changed to fear and anger. The guy tried to crawl away from there because he already realized what was going to happen, but the old man stopped him by grabbing him by the collar. He didn't understand what kind of rags he brought and where were his things that he gave for washing. The old man grabbed the guy and ordered him to tell the truth. Otherwise, it would only get worse and he would receive even more blows. The guy began to talk about how simply, no matter how hard he tried, no matter how often he brought this tender body to the extreme point, he didn't understand why it was so hard to use, so much so that every time he had to just throw the stick. And the clothes became like this because the old man didn't even teach him Yui's technique, not to mention this stick that weighs a lot. The old man got angry and realized that he was claiming that it was the old man's fault, which is why he began to get very angry, and the guy realized that he had completely forgotten about the problems with the master's anger. After all, it's too dangerous to put pressure on him like that. So he tried to justify himself arguing that the old man should despise sin, but not the sinner. After which he asserted that the old man was also a man, so the guy decided to simply blame this stick for everything. So he asked him to throw it away, bury it, 
or something else. The old man just laughed and looked at the guy angrily, saying that he still had a lot to teach him. The second lesson was in the so-called process, and loud screams were heard from the house. And as a result, due to the master's rough upbringing, as a child, the guy could only blindly obey his words. He convinced himself that this was all just part of the training, and after some time, in the evening, there was training to increase the sensitivity of his hands. The old man asked if the guy understood now, and decided that if he answered positively, he should start and not forget to use canaks, thick stitches, cross stitch, seams, chain stitch, and all the other methods that he taught him to sew up torn clothes. The master claimed that sewing up all his clothes would benefit him. The sensitivity of his hands should increase. The guy had no choice but to try it slowly and carefully to get it right. However, even with such strong concentration, he accidentally pricked himself with a needle, which resulted in a wound from which blood flowed. And already early in the morning, there was an outdoor workout for the lower body, in which the guy had to carry three buckets and run jumping over stones. The water sloshed and constantly almost poured out of the buckets. It was very difficult for the guy to carry all this. In the morning, there was a training session to hone the mastery of senses and speed. And to be blunt, it was cooking. There was a late morning upper body strengthening workout that was actually just regular house cleaning. Then there was a second training to hone the mastery of feelings and speed, that is, the second cooking. After lunch, the first special training for strength and skill, namely washing with the help of that same stick. However, not everything was so smooth for him, and every time his clothes turned into rags. In the afternoon, there was a second special training for strength and skill, in the form of chopping wood for housework. And he even developed a special tactic, throwing the axe with the blade on the logs, and due to the weight of the axe, they were divided in two. Before sunset, there was a third training session to hone his skills, senses, and the speed at which he prepared food. In the evening, there was training to increase the sensitivity of the hands, that is, sewing up clothes that were torn during washing. And so it was repeated day after day, early morning. Training in the fresh air, evening, training to increase sensitivity, noon, skill training, afternoon special training, and a week later he was lying on the floor completely exhausted. The old man noticed this and said that it shouldn't have been as simple as he wanted it. And he decided that since it was so difficult for the guy, he asked to be allowed to give him a couple of tips and asserted that they would greatly simplify his life. The Path of the Lightning Spirit A spiritual technique to use which the user must be familiar with inner strength. And another spiritual technique called the Path of the Condemned Spirit. First he must understand that thunder and lightning do not just appear in the sky. The yin and yang energy that comes from the mountains, rivers, and oceans creates thunderclouds in the sky. A mixture of little yin and a lot of yang can cause a blinding flash. This is what they call lightning. The path of the lightning spirit allows the user to summon the spirit of lightning using inner strength. The human body was created with the ability to absorb the energy that floats around us. This energy affects their body from head to toe, although they sometimes do not notice it. The breath should not stop in the nostrils, but should collect and disperse. This will teach him to control the flow of energy. He should subjugate the energy with the help of unshakable will, strength, and intelligence. Like all people, they instinctively know how to breathe correctly, but most of them live their lives without learning how to do this. The old man decided that he would tell him a story that would help him understand what he was talking about. Once upon a time, there lived a madman who sprayed gas on random passers-by. By instinct, most people first of all covered their noses, but everyone who did this died. The point is that if you don't know how to control true breathing, your body will inhale poison. However, if he develops the mastery of inner strength and learns the path of the lightning spirit, he will have nothing to fear. His body will be able to absorb the essence of lightning, giving him the power to destroy mountains and oceans. After this story, he asked the boy if he understood why it is so important to know the path of the lightning spirit. The boy liked the story, but he still didn't understand what the old man wanted from him. So he thought that maybe this time, he really should make more efforts. But still having made up his mind, he asked what exactly he should do. The old man did not understand what he meant, and asserted that he just needed to collect energy, dissipate it and subordinate it to his will, using only his inner will, strength, and reason. But to do this, he must use basic breathing techniques, practicing Qigong, in order to open his meridians, 
and only after opening the Twelve Meridians will he learn to properly control the flow of energy. He will have to memorize the huge number of arteries and veins in the human body. But still, the old man insisted that he explains only once, so you need to listen carefully. And if he asks him to repeat, the old man will think that the guy is not trying hard enough and will punish him. But the guy didn't think it was fair to memorize everything by ear, so he wanted to be given at least some. Then the records. However, the old man hit him, claiming that he had already told him not to raise his voice at him, and said that if he really thinks all this is dishonest, then he can write everything down in order to pass it on to his student in the future. But in any case, the master stated that once a guy develops the path of the condemned spirit, remembering all this will not be a big deal. The guy couldn't believe that everything was so simple that this technique would turn him into a super genius. The old man laughed and said that the guy doesn't even know what this technique is yet and began to explain that the basis of any control is to systematically control the physical and spiritual oneself, at the same time controlling the mind and heart. The path of the condemned spirit twists his head like a thread, maximizing his mental potential. This spiritual thread is practically indestructible. It even looks like a lake. If we talk about purity, calmness, and transparency, having achieved it, his body will achieve almost natural immutability. After which, the old man, noticing that the guy was distracted, hit him, asserting that if he wants to become the best, he needs to learn to focus because this spiritual technique is important if he wants to move forward. The guy began to cry and ask how he could learn it, to which the old man replied that this was done through concentration training, from which the guy realized that he would have to memorize a bunch of things. Although someone like a master does not agree with such ineffective methods of training, so he will teach him the way of the condemned spirit through various outdoor training, strict diet, and other methods. Seeing the guy's reaction, he said that he shouldn't worry, because this technique was developed with the blood, sweat, and tears of previous generations of the Lightning Clan. However, this only made the guy even more terrified, which is why he had a bad feeling. After all this, the first training of the body began, training in the fresh air, and the old man asked him about when, in his opinion, a person can best concentrate. And the old man, without waiting for an answer, said that when he was distracted for a split second and his head was about to fall off his shoulders. Under these teachings, the guy collected various mushrooms which he was instructed to collect as a regular training session. The body shape training method uses this principle and is designed for outdoor training. The old man confirmed that he would go to the mountains for one hour a day and collect leaves, mushrooms, fruits, and medicinal herbs there. And thanks to such training, he will be able not only to develop sensitivity and increase knowledge about the mountains, but every time he meets animals like this snake, he gains experience that contributes to the development of the reaction, concentration, and speed of the body. But the guy was afraid of such animals because he couldn't do anything with it. So he considered the master simply a killer. By the way, this place is called Hong Yeo Bong because herbalists who met wild animals in the forest painted the bushes. Thanks to this... No one goes there on average, and it has become very quiet and calm here, so it is also better for him not to raise his voice there, but to be more careful. But in fact, the guy is very afraid of these animals, and being weak, he cannot oppose anything to them. And at that moment, someone appears who was able to defeat this bear with one blow, throwing a knife directly at his head. It was an old man who stood proudly on the hill and looked at the guy as he ran away, like the last coward and not his student. And without thinking twice, he carried this bear somewhere with him, despite the fact that the bear left traces with its body. After a short time, body training number two began, which consisted of diet and its usefulness. The guy ran home and realized that he barely survived, and at that moment he began to raise his head, and he saw what struck his gaze. It was the skin of a bear, and its meat lay next to it, but the old man did not understand why he was surprised, and just calmly said that today there was bear soup for lunch although in his head he thought that the guy was more than an hour late, so he prepared lunch. However, he realized that this could not be called just bear soup, and in general, he was incredibly surprised by all of this. But the old man believed that if it is made from a bear, then it turns out to be bear soup, so there is no need to find fault. The guy resigned himself and decided to say something about the fact that he was nagging. He couldn't understand why they were having lunch together, but for some reason the menu was very different and it looked strange. And the old man immediately explained that during training the body and soul should be light, this should be obvious, 
and the diet should be elementary. The old man decided to eat such fatty and unhealthy food himself, like a real hero who really just wanted to eat deliciously. And the guy must eat healthy and tasty grass. As a result, over time, he realizes the old man's care for him. But he immediately understood everything and turned the table over and asked him to stop lying because he believed that he could also eat meat and fish. But the guy only wanted to take such a rash step, imagining everything in his head. The guy began to realize that at this rate his life would end in ten years. While he was thinking about this, the old man asked why the guy still hadn't eaten. However, literally a moment passed and the master had already eaten everything, and such speed really surprised the guy. The guy thought that meat was not air to disappear like that in one bite. That's why he was so surprised. And the old man explained that the guy had such an expression on his face that he decided to eat everything quickly. So the old man thinks that the guy is again finding fault over little things. After that, he decided that there was no time to waste and they needed to train, so he should eat quickly. And at the end, he added that the one who would be last would wash the dishes. Such words angered the guy because the old man would still have harnessed him to wash the dishes, no matter who would eat first. The third body training began, which consisted of practical learning, and when they arrived at the right place, the old man told the guy to say hello. He began to explain that this child carved from wood taught many generations of students, and the guy can call him a wooden martyr. The guy was very scared that this mannequin had the name Martyr, so he thought it was a joke. The master held this mannequin by the shoulder and began to suspect that the guy didn't like something, and the guy directly said that it was so, because the mannequin looked so bad that the whole mood was spoiled. Not only did he have a terrible appearance, but also the rag that covered what was below the belt was most annoying. The old man began to explain that this wooden statue was made in the shape of a man to study acupuncture, and the whole body was made very naturally. So he asked if the guy wanted to take off the rag, and after learning the history of this doll, he decided to leave it like that. He continued to explain that to properly learn acupuncture, one must start with the 12 meridians and 8 points, and today they should try to learn the 12 meridians. The old man stated that the guy should remember how he would stab the statue, and then he should repeat the same thing, and asked whether the guy could handle it. The guy was very happy about this, because the old man finally began to teach something that resembles real training after which he decided to clarify the number of meridians, and stated that this is too much for ordinary children. But he is a genius, so he can handle it. The old man heard this and decided that it was time to start, but said in advance that then the guy should try to learn, and said that if he made a mistake, he would personally assign him a punishment. But the guy had the feeling that he had fallen into a trap, but I hoped I was wrong. The master swung a needle and began to tell that 12 meridians are located in the human body along the channels of circulation of the energy of internal organs. The meridians are connected with the internal organs, and depending on the organ itself, the meridians are divided into yin and yang. Generally, the meridians that are on the outside of the arms and legs are yang, and those on the inside are yin. The meridians located on the arms are called sugen, and those on the legs are jokgen. The meridians can be divided into Susam Yang, that is meridians on the hands yin. Susyam Yangan, that is the yang meridians on the arms, Joksamingan, the yin meridians on the legs, Joksam Yangan, the yang meridians on the legs, each of them includes other meridians. The yin meridians on the arms consist of the lung meridians, that is, the pericardial meridians, and central, in the very heart, the meridians on the hands. Yang consists of the meridians of the large intestine, the meridians of the three bags and the small intestine, the meridians on the legs, yin, from the meridians of the spleen, the meridians of the liver, the meridians of the kidney. Thus, twelve paired meridians can be represented as a set of meridians of the lungs, colon, stomach, spleen, heart, small intestine, bladder, kidneys, pericardium, three bursae, yolk bladder, liver, and the last closing circle connect to the lung meridian, because of which the circulation of qi energy occurs. And in short, the meridians on the hands yin circulate from the chest to the fingers, the meridians on the hands yang, from the fingers to the head, the meridians on the feet. Yang, from the head to the toes, the meridians on the feet, yin, from toes to chest. And thus, they form a single chain, 
The guy could not stand it and screamed that there was a whole mountain of terms, and he would not understand everything at once the first time without repetition, even without the appropriate knowledge. And what's more, the old man also spoke very quickly. The master stopped and remembered who called himself a special prodigy, and asked him to at least try before complaining. The guy shouted again asking the old man to just tell who the guy needs to beat. The master, in turn, without hesitation, confirmed that first he had to beat the dummy, show on the doll what he had learned. In an instant he became kind and said that from the meridian of the lungs to the bladder, for each mistake there is one blow, and with these terrible words he gave the guy a needle. However, the boy realized that he did not remember anything, because of which he would most likely have to take the blows. He decided to reflect that at the age of five, he memorized books about thousands of paraglyphs, Chen Jamun, and four volumes about the three phenomena of Saso Sam Gyen. He still didn't understand how it was all connected, but he had to repeat it. Without any ace up his sleeve, he figured he could just copy Sabu's actions. From the chest, the respiratory meridian flows. Then comes the pericardial meridian, and behind it the central one, which originates from the heart and from the abdominal cavity, the colon meridian. Here are the meridians of the three bags. Then the meridian of the small intestine passes, which in turn flows into the meridian of the spleen. Now they must move on. The liver meridian, then the kidneys. And from the stomach there is another meridian corresponding to it. The penultimate one is the gallbladder meridian, and finally the bladder. And they all form a vicious circle, showing and telling this. The guy really hoped that he was not mistaken in his memories. The old man thought a little and said that he was a good teacher. And despite the fact that the guy still has to study and study, there is still a little hope. The guy couldn't understand why he said that, because he had just seen with his own eyes how surprised the master was. So he couldn't understand why it was so difficult for him to simply praise. The master, in turn, only said that he was surprised by the number of unnecessary movements the guy made, and he thought that he passed the test perfectly. So now he decided to do an additional test so that the guy could show the lung meridian on himself. He tried to show with his finger how this meridian passes through his body and believed that he did it correctly. However, it seemed to the old man that he was expecting punishment from him, because despite the fact that 12 meridians bear this name, in fact there are many more of them. The pulmonary meridian alone consists of 11 channels of both arms. After that, he concentrated very hard and these really scared the boy because he didn't know what to expect next. The old man began to show points of influence. Junbu, Unmun, Chenbu, Hyobek, Chektek, Ganchwe, Yongle, Gengo, Taiyong, Oje, Sosan. And after such a practical lesson, I wanted to know the guy's opinion on how he liked this kind of presentation of the material. Sighing, he thought that it was an excellent massage and said that lately his back and shoulder had been hurting and he had heartburn, but now everything was better. The old man understood from the expression on his face that he liked it, and asked him to remember it with his body, after which he said that it was the meridian of the lungs. True, after this the guy got angry, not understanding why the old man didn't immediately start with this example. Not only did he start the first lesson two months later, having heard such a statement, the old man asked if the guy was sure that he wanted him to show him all the points of interaction at once. Realizing that he was in vain to say this, he began to claim that he got excited and thinks that the current version of teaching is also good. So he asked Saba to continue, and in his head he thought about why he was saying this now, which is why it seemed to him that he had a bad feeling. The master realized that the guy was smart and said that when studying the circulation of blood flow, one should not practice lethal and paralyzing points of influence. Although it is a shame, this is all because of a possible fatal outcome. But still I decided since the guy is so talkative, then I need to show him the points of influence on the tongue. The guy asked to stop joking like that and asked him to start the lesson, after which he began to point out the meridian on a wooden doll, and the old man at that time remembered the punishment for mistakes. He began to calculate something, saying that on the wooden doll he showed 309 points of influence on each side, and in the end it turns out to be 618 and the guy was able to correctly repeat only 43 on the left and right, for a total of 86. 
The boy began to understand that this was 532 blows, but he believed that this could not be and could not understand how the old man calculated it, because these are only 12 meridians, which means there should be no more than 12 blows. Sabu laughed and said that this is called body structure teaching, because with each blow he will show which points the guy showed incorrectly, and his body must remember them. The guy realized that things were very bad, and after these blows he would die, so he decided that he needed to run away. They ended up practicing this technique every day. Sabu pointed out the guy's mistakes and he in turn constantly corrected them. It was a difficult time because he had to remember a lot of things, and when it didn't work out for him, the old man showed the meridians right on his body. Periodically, the guy meditated to learn to control his inner strength, and he did this regardless of the season and weather that surrounded him. Four months later, he was sitting on a rock in a motivational stand. As a result, he learned a little to synthesize the same energy, then compress it to make the density of this matter much stronger. He tried very hard and always tried to do everything right, and when he finished, Sabu came. The old man was surprised why the guy took so long because the guy still needs to get ready to cook, chop wood, do laundry. However, at that moment, he began to sharply show the cooked food, chopped firewood, drying things on them, cleaning the house. After showing all this, he told the old man that he would already go because he still needs to finish learning Nerensimbab and Yon Sasim Yol. At least when studying these techniques, he does not need to waste physical strength so he can rest a little. The old man looked at him like he was a laughingstock because he had only learned the basics but behaved like a know-it-all and asserted that if someone heard him, they would think that he was his servant, not a student. However, the guy was so desperate that that's exactly what he thought. Sabu stopped him and insisted that he was not yet ready to learn fighting techniques. He thought for a bit and decided that since the guy thought he was ready, they could try something. The old man confirmed that from today the guy will study this instrument. He began to explain that wielding the Sword of Thunder is like playing an orchestra. Playing the Geogeum requires refined finger movement techniques and exceptional concentration. And especially this Nagium, it is believed that not everyone can master it. This playing of an instrument involves not only technique, but also something else, something special. This something will help him in the future to control the sword of smashing thunder. And if a guy learns to play this instrument, then half the battle is done, and he will quickly be able to learn control the blade. The guy was surprised that before the old man didn't even let him wipe off the dust from this instrument. But now, and now he will finally learn to play it. And the guy imagined how girls look at him and compliment him. He imagined that he would become the youngest and most beautiful master and would compose lines along the lines of, no matter how high the sky is, it lies under the mountains. Let your body die one, two, or seven hundred times. He liked this arrangement, especially since he believed that a warrior should wield not only a sword, but also a musical instrument. However, the old man began to explain that it was not a musical instrument and he did not say that his plan included a part in learning a musical instrument. He was surprised that the guy was small and loved to show off, and began to explain that this naked one was a priceless treasure of their school, and it would be an honor for the guy to learn how to play it. The old man began to leave, thinking that first they would need to teach him how to play the Kayagigum, and then they would move on. The guy at that time decided to listen to how this instrument would sound. The master noticed this and realized that things were very bad. And in the end, his worries were not groundless. The guy's finger was severely cut. The old man bandaged him and began to explain that he had already asked not to touch everything and ordered him to thank God that he did not lose a finger. He explained that this tool is made of a special material, a thread that controls thunder. It cuts everything that touches it, and you need to know a special technique. The guy got angry because the old man said that he would teach him to play it, so he thought that he could touch it because they had not told him that he was so dangerous, and he could not understand how anyone could learn to play such a thing. The old man took this tool in his hands and called the guy a wooden head, after which he confirmed that the great Sabu would personally play one melody. He asked to listen with a specious feeling. The guy didn't like his phrases, so he said that when the old man gets older, when he no longer has the strength to beat him, he will laugh at him. But the old man, despite these words, decided that it was time to start playing. He made an incredibly beautiful and harmonious melody. It seemed as if the world began to take on new colors. He simply could not believe such a beautiful melody. Even all the animals on the street cried while listening to it. The guy was in ecstasy, 
not understanding what happened and where he was. The old man finished and said that the guy had an idiotic face, after which he explained that this is the power of Bunresu. Bunersu is not a fighting technique. It's more of a skill. There are no specific rules, but if you study it, your palms will become strong so that neither a thread nor a sword can hurt them. And if you train, then not only the palm, but also the arms will also be able to get stronger. In sword control, the main component is the thread that controls thunder, so you need to master Bun Resu, reaching at least the sixth level, and learn to play the Kaya Giam well. Or his hands will be cut right in half at the slightest movement. From this, the guy realized that then he needed to first start learning Bun Resu, so he asked how long it would take him to reach the sixth level. The old man said that you need to study it with patience, and he thinks it will take ten years to master it. The guy was very surprised by the words about ten years. He decided that it would be better for the old man to leave him when he was going to study the Naren Simbab, because he said that he would teach him to play the Negyum. And now, Sabu laughed and said that he would teach him. He simply said that it's too early for a guy like this guy to play the Kayagium. He needs to live another hundred years, especially since he doesn't even know the notes, and is already whining that he can't play it on the Negeum teaches to play. First, he had to learn to play something easier. And also, the old man thinks that the guy is more or less ready for martial arts. So starting tomorrow, they will start learning the basics. He was happy about this, but was surprised, because if tomorrow they start learning the basics, then what did he study before? And the old man explained that all this was needed to eliminate muscle pain and prepare his body for study. The guy was scared and didn't know why the old man was asking, because in the guy's opinion, everything was so clear. But the old man wasn't going to delay. So he said that tomorrow, when he finished all the housework, he should come to the backyard. When they were there, the guy became curious if this was really a martial arts class. Sabu smiled and confirmed this, stating that he had no need to deceive the boy. After which he gave him knives and began to explain that throwing knives is the main basis in the martial art of their school. But he was tired of talking, so he ordered to hit the cones on the tree. To begin with, the old man stood in the right place and decided that since this was the first lesson the guy should try to hit from 15 meters, and to achieve success, you don't need to rely only on strength. You need to use Yan Sasim Gyol and imagine a vector between the knife and your goal. With the help of Yunaren Sim, Bob control your breathing and body energy. And finally, you need to throw the knife straight along this invisible line with all your might. The guy threw the knife as hard as he could and wanted to see if he hit the target. However, the knife hit a branch right next to the pine cone. He missed and was upset about it. The old man said that from this distance he must hit the target exactly in order to move to the next level. And Sabu thinks that if Bob shows his strength and diligence, he will cope in four months. Then you need to double the distance and train until he hits at least half the time, and before that he should not disturb the master. He claimed that he had already told him everything he needed to know, so he left. Although in fact he was tired of teaching Bob, the guy understood that he would need to study on his own for ten months, and decided that he would not leave the master alone. He grabbed the knife and insisted that he would only get hit so that the master's life would become worse because it was as easy as shelling pears. The guy threw knives, as he believed, at the speed of light, and after three months, he hit from a distance of as much as fifteen meters. And then, after about another three months, he ran to the old man with the news that he had finally gotten. The master praised him for being able to do it in just six months, and was surprised at the speed with which he threw them, and stated that this could only be seen once every hundred years. But in fact, it was a mockery. And the guy said that if the old man had not forced him to do housework, he would have done it faster, but the old man considered it just whining. Bob was surprised by these words and realized that they would give him a gift, and so it was. The master prepared a gift because tomorrow is the guy's birthday, and he was going to see his father at the cemetery. Besides, he has made progress in his studies. So the old man really there is a gift for him. He was touched by this. He couldn't understand why Sabu was doing this because it didn't look like him, so he hoped that he didn't get sick with something serious. Sabu was angry with such words, so he hit him on the head and thought that he did not need his gift. The old man asked the guy to straighten both arms so that he could give him this gift. He suddenly took out some object and began to rapidly forward. The master put kaidans on him and began to laugh, saying that this is called mukwan. These are bracelets for arms and legs which are now in trend among young people. 
He considered it beauty and training in one, but the guy thought that it was just heavy shackles. This angered the old man, and it seemed to him that the guy thought that he was lying and said that in general, one Muhuan weighs only 12 kilograms. It is much lighter than a wooden washing stick or an axe, so there is no need to whine, and he should carry, there are always them. However, Bob calculated that two arms, two legs, a total of 48 kilograms, and to call it light, is a complete lie. But the old man insisted that when he goes to the cemetery to visit his parents, they will be company, and he should not take them off without permission. The master decided that now it was time to start a new knife-throwing task. Sabu started talking about how until now he was aiming at standing targets, but now they will try to hit moving targets. First, he had to try from a distance of 15 meters, but Bob thought that then Sabu should at least take the Mukwan off him, because he wouldn't get caught with these weights on his hands. However, the old man believed that his only student would soon be left without arms. He did not have, and did not have weak, whining students. He studied Yon Sa Sim Gyol and Naren Shim Bob, so he decided that nothing should stop him from completing the simplest task. But the guy was tired of being told that it was all because he lacked diligence. He decided that he had to hit all the targets, but he didn't even get close, so he decided that he needed to try again. It seemed to the old man that he would have to start from scratch, but he thought a little more and decided that everything was wrong. The guy thought there was a problem with this method of training, and the master confirmed it. There really was a problem with this method of training. While he's training, the old man can't constantly stand here and shake this bump. He can't. He thought that it would still be better if the guy shook her himself and then threw a knife from a great distance. And after thinking a little more, he realized that the guy would have to learn the phoenix move. The phoenix technique is a movement technique. That is, this technique assumes that the body moves like a fiery bird. The series of techniques includes the movements of Jiangon, Shinbob, and Bobob. Gyeonggan suggests that the body with the lightness of a feather moves quickly, long and as far as possible. Shinbob is similar to Gyeonggan. But the teachings say that Shinbob is a technique that allows you to control the weight, position, and shape of the body. That is, this technique allows you to strengthen the body like iron or spin in the air and so on. Sometimes people use Chukulgan, which is a type of Shinboob and can reduce the size of a person's body. But this technique often has side effects, so it will not teach it. And finally, Bobob, this technique allows you to move your arms and legs very quickly, like a ghost in a fight with an opponent. Of course, this does not mean that only the legs move. Leg movements involve the work of the muscles of the whole body. So it is more correct to say that the technique allows you to speed up the entire body. For the guy, it sounded tempting, but it meant that he would learn these techniques in shackles. The old man believed that since everything is clear, then they will start still punyun, which is the basis of the phoenix technique. This technique will be useful to him on the way to the cemetery to his parents. And if he wants his back to remain intact, he needs to watch carefully. After these words, the master began to walk very quickly around the guy. A little later, he also tried to repeat it, but he was always wrong. He tried his best, and the old man said that if he didn't learn, he would beat him all night. After all this, he still went to the cemetery. But on the way back, someone was already following him. The guy, thinking that he had gone far enough from the master, decided to remove the shackles, and the silhouette that was watching him did not disappear. And when he took them off, this man came up to him with a fierce look. It was a master who took his stupid and disobedient student. After a while, the guy continued to learn how to run, and the master couldn't understand why he screams so much when he runs, because that's just a waste of energy. Although, to sum it up, he learned a lot in half a month. Some more time passed, and the old man confirmed that now the guy needs to shake the cone and practice throwing knives, and until he hits from a distance of 30 meters, he can't call the teacher, after which the guy said to the teacher that he was too lenient. One day, an ordinary day for an old man, he ate delicious food, and at that moment a guy came running and said that now he could hit a moving target from a distance of 30 meters. The guy couldn't understand how to drink sake with a long stick, he didn't understand why he couldn't pick up the bottle, and in general, he wanted the teacher to teach him instead of drinking. But the master asked him to stop talking so much. He asked him to take something and go study. He had to try to hit the target with this chopstick, and instead of a pine cone, he should have hung this left and right. Because of this, the guy realized that the old man was so annoying to teach him, 
He couldn't understand why he should study with this wand, because he would never fight with such garbage, so it's just a waste of time. However, the old man could not understand why he decided that he would not fight without a blade, because for a real master, even a bird's feather is a weapon. And then suddenly, in an instant, he decided to throw his wand at the target that he himself had designated with it, namely the crow that was flying in the sky. The guy simply didn't have words to describe his emotions. He couldn't believe that the master was really able to kill a bird on the fly with a stick. Now he hoped that he had now convinced him that a stick could also become a terrible weapon. And by the way, he immediately decided to order the guy to butcher this bird. At this point, we move on to another story of the old man in which the white tiger showed her his belly, since she gave birth to tiger cubs. But in reality, no, she was just pretending to be nice, so that the old man would share sake with her. The tigress began to caress herself, clinging to the old man and licking her paw. But the old man found it tiresome, and began to assert that if she wants to drink, she should sit still and not touch anything until he is not here. The tigress did just that, didn't touch anything and simply guarded the area from enemies. Without thinking, she began to lick her lips cutely, and at that moment a boy came running and shouted to Sabu that he had completed the task. Due to the incompleteness of the picture, it seemed to the guy that the tiger killed his teacher, covered his corpse with a blanket, and now sits calmly and warms himself by the fire. The boy found it all quite strange, considering that there was not even a trace of blood, and Sabu is not a weakling either so he decided that he needed to throw a feather in the eye of this tiger and just run away. She suddenly attacked, leaving him no choice, and the guy started shouting that for the death of Sabu, he would take revenge on her somehow later when he became an adult. But at that moment another shell flew towards her from the other side, and Sabu screams that he asked her not to touch anything. Sabu didn't understand what kind of nonsense the guy was talking about, what it meant to avenge death somehow later. This is ingratitude but he began to justify himself by saying that he could not take revenge on her if she defeated Sabu, because first then he needed to become stronger, and he also had a question why a tiger was sitting at home as if this was the norm. And he also could not understand what kind of corpse was lying under the blanket. As the old man explained, there was a wooden doll under the blanket, and he had known the tigress for a long time before he met the boy. Her name is Little White, but the guy was surprised that they had known each other for a long time, and that the tiger had become dearer than its neighbors, and also could not understand what kind of stupid name it was. A second later, the tiger was near Sabu and licked his lips, and the guy thought that he was going to eat him, and Sabu just thought that this is exactly what the guy wanted. After that, the old man said that the guy came early, so he wanted to send him to training again and also decided to immediately say that the meat he was frying now was lamb, which should be eaten with warm sake. It was good for older people, so the guy didn't must claim it. However, the guy thought that he was lying, so he asked him to lie at least in more detail, especially since he came because he completed his task. But he said what he had already said. When you finish with the stick, you need to start practicing throwing a feather into the soybean after which he sent the boy to quickly train hard. At that moment he threw it into the soybean that was lying on the plate, which in turn was lying near the tigress's bowl. Having demonstrated this, he confirmed that he could now hit anything with a feather. True, the old man, when he saw this, didn't understand why he threw the pen there. The old man pulled out a feather and told the tigress that without feathers it looked edible, and confirmed that all the dates were safe and sound. However, the guy did not understand why such phrases as if this tiger is the father of date palms given his behavior. But the old man explained this by saying that she doesn't like it when people touch her food, especially like this. From these words, the guy only realized that it was a tigress. But then he realized something else, that the tigress drinks sake and snacks not on meat but on dates, and ate them with great enthusiasm. Despite how it all looked, it was reality. After thinking a little, he decided that he needed to apologize to the tigress, claiming that he did it by accident and asked her to be kinder to him. He came closer to the tigress and began to pretend that he was cold and wanted to warm up by the fire. However, the old man did not approve of this and could not understand what he was doing and why he was doing it. And in fact, he wanted to stroke her. But the old man immediately warned that he would lose his hands this way. The tigress, also realizing this, began to get angry and the boy was angry that the old man said because he thought that she wouldn't have noticed. The master realized that in the guy's eyes, the little white one was a pet, 
like a cat or a dog. But she was ten times older than him, maybe more, so he had to think for himself. If some puppy stroked the back of his head, would he be calm? Sit. Having heard this, the guy was surprised, realizing that this tigress was 110 years old, and thought that then the old man should call her not just Little White, but Little White Ant. However, Sabu considered this absurd, but after thinking a little, he understood it, because many say that he looks younger than his age. The guy pretended not to be surprised, but in fact he began to realize that he was over 110 years old, and a little more, and he would call himself a sacred spirit. But this seemed disgusting to the guy, so he decided it would be better not to talk. After a short time, the master confirmed that since they had eaten everything, they needed to go check the boy's skills. The boy was upset because they didn't even leave him enough for one sip, but they drank it all. But at that moment, he asserted that if the guy lags behind, he will order the little white one to drag her with his teeth. The teacher lay down on the little white one and asked the boy to show how he did it. He showed that he first shakes the soybean hanging on a branch, doing it with one finger. Then he used the phoenix technique, thanks to which he was able to instantly run away to a long distance. And then he turned around and took out a feather, thanks to which he will now knock down this soybean. After that, he concentrates and uses energy to launch the feather at the target. The fact that he is fluent in Yon Sasimgyel and the guy continued, explaining that at the moment when the target is visible, taking into account the direction and wind speed of the target's movement, he calculated everything exactly down to the smallest detail. And then thanks to this energy and precise calculations, he throws the pen directly at the target. Such speed surprised the master and the tigress, and they were interested in the question of whether he got to the right place. As it turned out, it was an accurate hit on the target, he was able to hit this soybean, punching it exactly in the center. The old man found this strange because he believed that the guy could not reach this level so quickly. The guy claimed that Sabu could simply rejoice at the rapid growth of his student, and asserted that the secret of success is that he is special, plus the ability to focus on training. The master listened to him and asked him to come to him for a minute to check something. However, the guy was scared and didn't understand why, suspecting that he wanted to beat him out of jealousy for his talent. Sabu decided to threaten that if before he pronounces this proposal to him, the tigress will drag him with her teeth to Saba. Without thinking, he ran up to him and sat on his knees to answer all the questions that were asked of him. He asked how good he was at Bunresu, but the boy replied that it was nothing special. The old man asked to hit his hand using Bunresu and to do it as hard as possible, and he really insisted on this, asserting that no matter how hard he hit, he would not scold him. But the guy began to talk about how as a student, he could not hit him. He simply could not afford it, although on the other hand he could not resist his orders. Therefore, with a smile on his face, he said that the master leaves him no choice, which is why he is forced to beat. The old man also smiled and asserted that if he didn't hit on the count of three, then he would do it. The guy did it without thinking twice, hit him as hard as he could, without holding back despite the fact that he was his teacher. And looking at the guy, he said that he did not expect such a turn of events. He grabbed him and said that the guy was caught red-handed because he didn't take something into account, after which he asked a sharp question about what the boy was taking secretly from him. However, the guy pretended that he didn't understand what he was talking about and leaned a little away from the old man. The master began to explain that if he didn't take anything, then how did he reach such a level so quickly, after which he stated that the guy's strength was felt in his hand but he pretended that he didn't understand what kind of power he was talking about if he was now sitting in front of him, integrity and safety. The old man continued, claiming that the boy's strength was felt when he hit, and when he watched how accurately he threw the feather at the soybean, he already realized that his skill had already exceeded this level. His level of proficiency in Bunresu was already fourth, and he masters the Narion Shimbub as much as his kind can achieve after at least seven years of training and also his eyes. When you learn Naran Shimbab too quickly, in the process of studying due to inexperience, it is difficult to clearly separate the internal forces, and this manifests itself in the eyes as a side effect. Thus, we can conclude that if he had not eaten anything extra, he would not have been able to reach such a high level so quickly. However, he immediately began to make excuses that he was not to blame for anything, after which he decided to pretend that he was a fool and insisted that his only fault was that he was born a poor child prodigy. He trained hard and finally achieved success, but instead of praising Sabu, he scolds him, and of the two of them. 
only he eats food without him. The old man decided to leave behind because the guy started whining again, so he asked him not to make a show here and ordered him to get up and follow him. But he decided to stop him, asserting that he was not taking anything. But the old man did not believe it, but the guy was glad that he was not exposed. Eventually, on the 22nd, 22 hours and 45 minutes later, something started to happen. Namely, the guy walked through the forest and talked about how cold the night was and thought about where he could find greenery in the forest. And at that moment, he noticed mushrooms, which, of course, he immediately began to collect, although he was sad because there were so few of them. But looking behind the tree, he found some incredibly fragrant plant and was surprised that in such a cold there was this berry, which is a rather rare species. 